it's a special place. I mean, you know, coming up here when I was younger fishing, there's not many places in California you can experience some of the tallest trees in the world and, you know, chrome bright, fresh winter steel and, you know, beneath them. It's one of those places you come up here, you know, experience what it has to offer and it really gets you. I love the exploration. I have what's around the bend syndrome. I start going up a river and I just want to see what's around the next bend and then what's around the next bend and what's around the next bend. Steelhead are kind of the attraction that keep you going, you know? It's like if you're a miner and you're looking for gold and you come to a nice pool and you kind of pan that one out and you think, God, what's up in this next hole and what's up in this next hole? To me, the steelhead are the gold. They are, they are the prize, they are the treasure. If you're really fishing for wild fish, it's kind of a mystery. It's a little bit of a crapshoot sometimes, you know? You're kind of rolling the dice, you gotta get out and hunt them. I try to go at least a few times every year and go somewhere and chase steelhead because they're just uh, something I never will get tired of catching. This river blows out very easily. Um, it takes a long time to come back into shape. I mean, there's some seasons we get just a handful of days on the eel. Every storm the river can change. I mean, this year the river went from like 1500 CFS to 200,000 plus CFS in like three days. It's a changing river. You could find a run this year that fished awesome and come back next year and it doesn't even exist anymore. So um, it definitely keeps you on your toes. Um, but I also think that's one of the coolest things about it, you know. system it's it's one of the larger systems in California that gets you know runs a salmon and steelhead the coolest thing about the fishery in general is just the fact that it's all wild all catch and release the fish in this system went from probably being one of the mo most prolific runs of like winter run steelhead maybe even in the entire Pacific Northwest at one point in time to almost being completely gone and the fact that these fish were pretty much forgotten about for like 20 25 30 years allowed the species to recover. I mean, we, we haven't had hatcheries on the system in, in over 20 years almost. You know, the logging practices have changed, all catch and release, and it shows that wild steelhead will, will do their thing and, and will come back if we let them do that. And that's what I think other agencies and, and states need to look at is that the fact that if you kind of let these fish do their own thing, they'll make it happen. Fishing is a good way for people to come out here and, and interact with the ecosystem uh, on a deeper level. Chasing steelhead is definitely a, a spiritual experience and um, you know to a lot of people it's, it's like a religion. Uh, you know many many people equate the river to their church. You know it's where they feel the most connected to the higher power. swinging flies, you get the hottest fish in the river. These winter steelhead are typically so fresh from the ocean, they're pretty grabby fish, so if they're there, you know, they're gonna take a swung fly as well as they're gonna take something dead drifted most often. So it's just kinda how I prefer to fish.
Oh, sad. Super clear fins, just right out of the right out of the ocean. Awesome, special fish. <laughs> oh, that was awesome! Old traditional GP. These fish are hard to catch and that's the, the lure of catching them is why I do this and why many people come up here to try to catch one of these, these creatures. It is a very deep and, and spiritual experience to commune with nature and um, steelhead's a great vehicle that, that drives that. It, it forces me deeper into the woods and, and deeper into the river and you know, I, I feel uh, the most connected and at peace when I've got some cold, clean water rushing against my legs and a beautiful, surrounded by a beautiful forest and the sound of the rushing water. Yeah, you definitely uh, feel that connection with the Great Spirit. It's, it's an honor and a blessing to interact with those fish and. So you try to be try to be nice to them. Don't hold them out of the water for too long, or slap them up on the bank. And you want to honor and pay tribute to those fish, and, and uh, let them continue with their amazing journey. important thing with the eel right now is we might be able to use the eel river as an example for other rivers in the Pacific Northwest. If we let them do their thing they're going to come back and I'd like to really see rivers such as like the Elwha, the White Salmon, other places you know in the Pacific Northwest that have pulled dams and, and allowed the environments to, to kind of go back to being a wild river um, and give those fish time to come back and I think you know those rivers can maintain good runs of fish. But if you don't give these fish time, it's not gonna, ha you know, you're not gonna find out what could happen. Well, California is cool in that they've passed a law where you have to release uh, all wild steelhead in these rivers, and so it's a good measure, but it's a testament to how how low their populations are. It wasn't too long ago where you could keep a steelhead every time you went out and take it home for dinner and everybody did that and, and they were a really healthy and important source of food for local peoples for a long, long time and so to set a presidency, you can't even keep them at all, that, that's a, a testament to how low numbers their populations are. And so I think now is the, the critical time we need to shift our attention and our focus into preserving and protecting these, uh, these last remaining stocks they don't have a shot here then, then they don't have a shot but I think that this this is where the hope lies for sure for our native salmonids for our steelhead and salmon so we need to keep it that way so if steelhead are important to you there are ways you can get involved become a member of an organization like California trout or donate some money the people that are out there on the ground doing the good work to restore and protect these fish for future generations to get to know and enjoy and fish are important for the future of California. Ha <laughs>